Hello and welcome to another video, this time on the Mat 2013 question 5. Uh, now, I quite like this one. I thought this was a really nice uh, kind of question. Um, one thing I do want to say just before I start is this reminded me a little bit of, of this kind of question, or the approach anyway you want to take in these kinds of questions. It reminded me a little bit of this one where you just say, OK, I pick a number randomly from 1 to 100,000. What is the probability that my number doesn't contain the digit 2? Now, I know this looks nothing like the question to the left, but I think actually the approach is going to be uh, quite similar if you want to do it in an easy way. Yeah, if you want the easy way of doing it, it's really important to recognize the right approach. What is the probability that the number does not contain the digit 2? Um, pause the video and have a little think about that and see if you can come up with an answer before I tell you how to do it. That the number does not contain the digit 2. So I'm just putting a little extra in on this one. <laughs> Give that a go. Pause the video at this point, if you like, because I'm just about to go into the explanation. Now, um, <laughs> this is actually really, really nice to do if you just think of this question as basically going from the digits 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 999. Oh, yeah, sorry, and I wanted to go to, <laughs> can I, because oh, I'm going to, oh, well, I suppose I'll do it from 1 to 100,000 because it would just, okay, so 1 to 100,000. If we consider this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 999, nine 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 yeah then what we've got basically is a lovely way of representing all the numbers from one up to a hundred thousand yeah so for example the number one can be naught 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 one yeah in other words these are like the ten thousand thousands hundreds tens units yeah um and obviously zero 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 you can say well that can be the representative of a hundred thousand because you've obviously got a hundred thousand numbers from one to a hundred thousand and now we've got a hundred thousand possibilities from naught 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 up to nine 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 because now it's dead easy to find the probability that it doesn't contain the digit two because there's obviously ten characters in our number system naught to nine that's ten different digits, different characters, if you like, and we just want to avoid the one too. So essentially, there's, you know, like if you think about it as a tree diagram, if you like, or you can actually count all the possibilities, but I quite like tree diagrams and I find students do. Essentially, in the first place, you've got a 90% chance that the digit doesn't contain two, or in other words, there's, you know, nine out of 10 of them aren't two, there's the two and there's the other nine. <laughs> and then in the second position, you've got the same thing. In the third position, you've got the same thing. If you In the fourth position, you've got the same thing. And if the fifth position, you've got the same thing. And so you can then just do 0.9 to the power of five and you get the answer. I was supposed to do this from uh, one up to a million, actually, uh, then I actually know that what that is, but this is 0.59049, there we go. That's a probability, about 60% chance or 59% chance that your randomly selected number doesn't contain the digit two. Um, so yeah, that that kind of trick though, of like thinking about these numbers arranged like that makes the question so much easier because obviously they are equally likely, you know, like uh, as the numbers should be. There's, there's no overlap there. We've got a one-to-one -one correspondence of these numbers with the numbers in our number system, but it just means we can say, okay, you know, there's 10 possibilities there. Oh, but one of them I don't want so that's nine nine out of ten left and then just multiply them all together okay why is that relevant to this question well essentially i'm going to think about it in exactly the same way um, so the digit sum is the sum of the digits nothing too confusing there how many positive integers less than 100 have a digit sum equal to eight well this first part you probably got this right you're going to be systematic with it always be systematic in these questions let's have eight and zero let's have seven and one let's have six and two let's have five and three because we want the digit sum to be 80. i think you see the pattern now i'm just going to put dot 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 well actually i suppose i'll write it out completely um you're going to have four and four you're going to have three and two you're going to have two oh, sorry what <laughs> i've just suddenly destroyed my pattern there four and four is fine you're going to have three and five see how many times i make a mistake when i'm rushing this is always what the teachers used to complain about me for and they were right i rushed too much uh, zero and eight so you can see there you're going to have 
more than eight, just one more than eight, corresponding to the zero value. It's the fact that you've got to go from zero up to eight, which gives us the answer to part two, actually. But there's going to be nine ways there. Now, part two, it's asking you. I mean, they, they really do hold your hands in these questions because they wouldn't ask you part two before asking you part one because part one pretty much tells you the answer here. You can see for if the digit sum is equal to n, bearing in mind n is a number less than 10, yeah, well, you know, if M was seven, I, I just thought about it like this, actually, I think I gave it a really low value, like two. If M was two, you'd have zero and two, one and one, or two and zero. And as you can see, that's three ways for two. And that's because obviously here you've got to consider the two, the one and the zero. And that's why it's always going to be M plus one ways because of zero, essentially. I wrote a bit more down when I was writing, uh, answering this because you never know how many marks the question's worth. But uh, I think it wasn't worth too many marks. I think it was only worth a couple in the end or maybe even one. But there's n plus one ways because of the zero. That's essentially it, provided that n is less than 10. That's really important. OK, so that's part two. That wasn't too bad either. Part three, how many positive integers less than 1,000 have a digit sum equal to n? OK, so we've now gone from 100 to 1,000. Well, We've just be systematic again. It's always about being systematic. Uh, so I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give myself a nice blank screen, but I'm going to pull these questions down just so I've got lots of space down here. OK. So part three. So this is going to be a similar thing. Let's just try and be systematic. The way I was thinking about it was we're looking for a digit sum equal to n. And I thought, I'd, let's take eight as an example. Yeah because hopefully we can kind of like, uh, you know, extrapolate from this to find a general rule. You're going to have 0, 0, 8, yeah? And then I'm just going to try and keep this first term 0, and I'm going to have 1, 7, 2, and 6. And I already know how this is working, don't I? I know there's going to be n plus 1 ways here. So you're finally going to have 0, 8, 0. That's n plus 1 ways, yeah? And here I'm generalizing. I'm not using n. Oh, clearly, there's 9 ways there. But I'm just noting R. So if I took N as in my example, there'd be M plus one ways here. And now I'm going to change the first number to one. Now, all of a sudden, I'm going up to seven now, aren't I? Because I've already got one. So really, I'm dealing with seven here. So I'm going to have zero and seven, one and six, two and five, dot, 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 all the way up to one, seven, zero. How many ways are there there? Well, there'll be N ways there because you'll be on a number one less than the N value here. So that's N ways. And then I do exactly the same thing, but with two. Um, I'm going to be two, two, doing two, zero, six, two, one, five, dot, 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 all the way up to two, six, zero. Obviously, there's going to be N minus one ways there. I'm sure you can see what I'm driving at now. When you get down to like you know, in this example with eight, like um, the last two like uh, columns, I'd be doing seven one zero and seven zero one. There'd uh, there'd only be two ways there, and the last one would just be eight zero zero. And always check at the end: have you had any overlap? Yeah, because it's really easy to start overlapping things and getting things wrong. But there's no overlap here. 800 hasn't been double counted or anything like that. We've got eight over here. We've got 800 here because we're being really systematic. That's the key. If you're systematic, you can see you're not getting any overlap. These are the ones which start with zero. These are the ones which start with one. You know, the 100s, the 200s, all the way up to the 800s. And so what have we got here? We've got a sum from one to n plus one of r. Now, if you've done this before in like um, further maths, which almost all of you will have, I'm guessing, you will realize that sum of r from one to m is just n times n plus one over two. And so sum of r from one to n plus one, well, we've just replace the m with the n plus one, you're gonna have n plus one, n plus two over two. If you've never done that before, um, definitely work more on triangle numbers because essentially it's just triangle numbers or some of the integers like um, it's a really very very common result but you could also work it out as it's an arithmetic sequence you're actually uh, you've got a first term of one a common difference of one and you're summing to m plus one so you could use the formula for the sum of an arithmetic sequence and get this answer as well so that was part three didn't think that was too hard I was pretty confident um, at this stage of the question um, it was only really the last bit really, really where I had to kind of like just draw back and think a little bit but then 
Um, I really like this question, to be honest. It's one of my uh, more successful attempts at a Mac question. OK, how many positive integers between 500 and 999 have digit sum equal to 8? Well, once again, I was just systematic here. I was like, OK, well, I'm going to be doing 503, 5, 1, 2, 5, 2, 1 and 530. Yeah, those are the ones in the 500s. Um, what about the 600s? Well, there's going to be one less, isn't there? Because you're going to have 602. This is very much just like the last one, 611620. You know, you can just list these. You really can. Uh, 701 and 710 and then 800. So how many are there? There's 10 ways. Yeah. Um, and that's part four done. I, you know, <laughs> was really kind of scratching my head thinking what I've you know, I was expecting it to be more difficult, really. You know, when you're sometimes thinking, have I, you know, over overcomplicated this? Um, OK, part five. How many positive integers less than a thousand have digit sum equal to eight and one digit at least five? OK, well, I looked above here and I thought, well, at least 10, <laughs> because these the, this certainly, uh, you know, satisfies part five, doesn't it? There, there's a, one digit at least five everywhere here. And notice as well. And this is really important that when you've got one digit of at least five, neither of the other digits can be five or more. And that's because five plus five is ten, not eight. It's more than eight. Yeah. So you what that that makes this question much, much, much easier, because the first thing I thought was, well, I could just do this backwards. I could just do this backwards, um, you know, and think about the numbers just turned around. Yeah. In other words, I could do this with the units digit. There's going to be ten ways. With the units digit as five yeah what i mean by this is let me write it down for you um, i'm not going to write all of them down but i'm what i'm saying is there's going to be like um if you like uh if i have the five at the end there's going to be like three and zero there's going to be uh two and one and five there's going to be a one a two and a five do you see what i mean i'm just basically doing what i've got above but the five is on the end. And obviously, um, at the end, I've got five, three, zero backwards. Yeah, I'm just writing the numbers down backwards. So there's 10 ways with a units digit considered. There's 10 ways with, if you like, the, the hundreds digit considered, the hundreds considered. And guess what? There's also going to be 10 ways with the middle digit considered because each time, remember, the other two digits can't be five or six or seven or eight because that, that's that's bigger. That's too big. Basically, you're not going to get a digit sum equal to eight. Uh, by the way, if you looked at a mark scheme and thought, what are they talking about with disjoint sets? This is what they mean. They mean there's no overlap. Yeah, um, it's it, uh, to be honest, it always makes me chuckle when I read the mark schemes as well, because I think, yeah, they are using language there, which you probably aren't familiar with. Maybe you are. I don't know. And good if you are, because that's great. It means you've looked into set theory. But um, yeah, when they say the uh, sets are disjoint, they just mean there's no overlap between the sets. Um, and that's why we can do it like this. There's also 10 ways with the tens digit. And I fully invite you to write all of them down with the tens digits as five, six, seven or eight. My main consideration in this question is I kind of feel sometimes like I'm just writing down the answer without enough working. And that makes me kind of paranoid sometimes on these questions. But um, there we go. Uh, finally, part six. What is the total of the digit sums of the integers from 0 to 999 inclusive? Now, initially, initially when I was doing this um, for f at least five minutes, I was kind of thinking, oh, well, you know, I want to be careful here. I want to think about all the one digit combinations then I want to think about the two digits and then I want to think about the three digits that's a bad idea uh, for the same kind of reason as doing a similar approach is on this kind of question you don't want to think about the one digit numbers and the two digit numbers and the three digit numbers it actually makes it harder you want to have a nice one-to-one -one correspondence from you know like uh, using it thinking of it almost like a combination lock you know like uh, that's that's the way I see it but OK, so what is the total of the digit sums of the integers from 0 to 999 inclusive? So don't do it like that. Think of it as just 0, 0, 0 going through to 999. Yeah. Now, if you think about uh, the units digit, what's that going to be doing? It's going to be going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. As you wrote these numbers down, you know, like this. <laughs> If you did it like like that, 
for a very long time. Well, because we can add this up in any order we like, I can just think about adding up the units digits first. And the reason I can add it up in any order I like is because we're just adding up the digits. Yeah. And when you add, it's commutative. You can do it in any order you like. Um, so what we can do is we can just think, well, let's just add up all the unit digit appearances first. What are you going to have for the units digit? Like I say, it's just going to cycle. No up to nine and then not up to nine and how many times it's going to do that it's going to do that a hundred times yeah so we're going to do a hundred times not plus one plus two plus all the way up to nine yeah and that is obviously the sum from one to nine of r times a hundred and like i say you can work that out that's going to be a hundred times nine times ten over two which is 45 times 100, which is 4,500, yeah? Now, what about the uh, tens digit or the hundreds digit? Well, if you wrote it down in order, like I just did, and this is how I actually cracked the question, but um, afterwards I thought, actually, I was, you know, it's really obvious and it should just be like this, but uh, I was thinking about it like this at first. I thought it's going to be slightly different for the, the units digit, but you're going to end up with the same answer, and that's because you're going to have 10 zeros, then 10 ones, then 10 twos, all the way up to 10 nines, and then you're going to do it again, 10 zeros, 10 ones, 10 twos, all the way up to 10 nines. And then you're going to do it again as you go through the hundreds, all the way up to 999, you know, 999. And so you're still going to get 100 times zero, you know, or maybe I should put it like this. This is how I actually wrote it down. I thought 10 times you're going to get zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero. Why am I writing down all those zeros? And then you're going to do 1 plus 1 plus 1 nine times. Then you're going to do, if I can just put dot, dot, dot here, all the way up to 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9. Yeah, but you're going to do that 10 times. Now, if you look at that, you've got 10 lots of, uh, you know, 10 lots of 10. So you're still going to get 100 times by the sum from 1 to 9 of R, which is obviously still 4,500. And of course, with the, with the hundreds digit, it's going to be really, really similar, but you're just going to have one cycle through, if you like. So I'll just write one time. But you're going to have like, um, rather than having 10 zeros, you're going to have 100 zeros, yeah? There's 100 of those. Yeah, that just represents the first 100 numbers. Yeah, that's all that is because I'm looking at the hundreds digit here. You're going to have the first 100 numbers with a zero on the end, starting from 0, 0, 0, all the way up to 0, 9, 9. There are 100 numbers there. Do you see what I mean? Um, and then you're going to have 1 plus 1 plus 1 for, that, for all the hundreds, you know, from 100 to 199. You're going to have that. And then, you know, from 900 to 999, well, you're going to have this yeah so what have we got here well once again we've got exactly the same thing 100 times by sigma 1 to 9 r which is 4500 and so at the end we obviously need 300 times the sum of from 1 to 9 of r or 3 times 4500 and hence the final answer and i'm sorry for all my messy maths you know i'm terribly messy uh you're going to have 3 times 4500 which is 13,500. Now, once I saw that, I actually thought, hang on, isn't this obvious? Because, you know, basically, <laughs> you've, all you've got to do is you've got to kind of realise that like, for each number, yeah, let's say, um, let's just go over here for this, each digit, and this is where, when I checked my answer with theirs, I realised, yeah, they've, they've put it so much nicer than I ever could. Now, you, you know, I know some of you complain about um, the mark scheme occasionally being quite hard to understand. Bear in mind, you will need to try and understand that kind of stuff. Um, my normal reaction to the mark scheme is, yeah, that's not, that's actually a lot better than my way. <laughs> if if I got the right answer or just, uh, oh, yeah, I was wrong, uh, <laughs> you know, which when I get the wrong answer. But my, my, my thinking is that each digit will feature 100 times in any position yeah this is really the very simple way of doing it each digit will feature a hundred times in any position how am I going to justify that well let's take six in the middle yeah and you've got that space there and that space there well obviously you could have ten possibilities for this one ten possibilities with that one and ten times ten is a hundred 
yeah <laughs> so there's a hundred ways for six to appear in the middle yeah there's also a hundred ways for seven to appear in the middle there's a hundred ways for eight to appear in the middle now think about what that's going to do it means that like uh you know well, if you're just taking and bearing in mind we're adding them in any way we like if you're just thinking about how many times a digit six is going to appear it's going to appear a hundred times in the middle a hundred times at the start using a similar argument 10 times 10 a hundred uh, it's going to appear a hundred times at the end, yeah. <laughs> ten times ten, a hundred. So each digit ha appears three hundred times in this digit sum. So what digits have we got? No, one, two, three, all the way up to nine. Yeah. It, let me write it down even clearer. What I'm really doing, I need to do three hundred times zero plus three hundred times one <laughs> plus all the way up to three hundred times nine. And obviously, I can factorise out of three hundred and turn it into a sigma and that's why the answer is sum of 300 from uh sum of r from 1 to 9 times 300 which is 13,500 okay hope you enjoyed that video um i'm off swimming now so uh yeah all the best with my exam keep up the hard work i should be putting more videos up actually uh once we get to half term because uh, i know it's just before the exam so many of you might appreciate it i want to go through a video for dylan if dylan's watching i don't know because uh, uh he had trouble with a question in my class the other day and i want to show everyone a horrible question which another uh person in my class james showed me which i just completely failed on and i think it's always nice to talk about your failures and sort of recognize why your thinking was poor and where it went wrong but um yeah i'll show you that question as well soon all the best everyone bye bye